Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today, inshallah, we will discuss together a very important case in the urogyny module, which is the stress urinary incontinence in a patient refusing the surgery or the surgical management. So you will find the case in the case notes, a patient usually, uh, she's 40 something or 50 years and she's referred by the GP with incontinence, you will find in the case notes, either she's diagnosed by the urodynamics to have a, a urodynamic stress urinary incontinence, or you will find the urodynamics in front of you. And here will come the second job. You have to read the urodynamics, interpret, and also explain it to the patient. Please don't forget to confirm the name age and NHS number of the patient on the top of the report. It's one of the patient safety and it's one of the common mistakes. Usually the candidates forget in the exam to confirm the name. Just tell the patient that I believe this report belongs to you or I confirmed your name on the top of the report or I confirm it or after confirmation of your name, age and NHS number and I believe this report belongs to you. So let's go together to see how to go through this case and also how to counsel the patient regarding the management options and then how to speak about the medical management. It's very important. And here we will not uh, speak about the surgery, but just we, we want to know why this patient refused the surgery. And then we will speak more about uh, medical management. So let's start the introduction. Just introduce yourself, set the agenda with the patient. Um, you have a problem with your water work and you are here to discuss your management options or you want to know the result of the test done for you. Is that correct? Yes, doctor. Then just tell her that um, we will come to this concern within a few minutes. But before that, I'd like to ask you a few questions to know more about you. In the information gathering and the problem with the urogyny, that the information gathering is very long, especially in the history of the present illness. So give yourself up to five minutes here. Usually my advice for any module to take around four minutes in the information gathering, but in the urogyny, you can take around five minutes here. In the history of the present illness, we have to ask about the stress urinary incontinence at the start, but please don't forget to rule out the overactive uh, bladder, to rule out any prolapse, and also to ask about the red flag sign. What about the red flag, fine, red flag signs? I will start with this. Any patient with urinary problem, bowel problem, loss of weight, loss of appetite, or any pain, lump, bleeding, if you have any one symptom of these, please ask about the others. So because we are here in the urogyne module, and usually the problem in the water work or in the uh, uh, bladder or it's like urinary symptoms. So we need to rule out the cancer. How to rule out the cancer? By asking about other red flag signs, loss of weight, loss of appetite, any bowel problem, any pain, any lump, any bleeding. So we have to ask about this. And then stress urinary incontinence. How to ask the question, since when it started? And usually, guys, my advice, start with the open question. When you will start with the open question, would you please tell me more about your problem? So the patient will start to answer many questions in this question, like it's now six months, I'm suffering from this incontinence, or uh, I'm wetting myself, and this with cough, with uh, lifting heavy objects, with the sneezing. It's affecting my life. So the patient will start to speak up and she will tell you like answers of many questions. So since when, what increase, any bulge to rule out the prolapse, any change in the color of the urine, any burning sensation to rule out urinary tract infection, very important. Any blood in the urine, is it affecting your life or not, your sexual life or not? What about your drinking habit? very important questions. To rule out the overactive bladder, just ask the patient any rush to the toilet if the answer is yes. So how many times do you need to pee in a day and night and then analyze and ask more questions about the overactive bladder. If no rush to the toilet, so just one question to rule out the overactive bladder. 
Then the personal smoking, alcohol, recreational drugs, very important, especially the smoking, because the smoking will increase the weakness of the muscles and it will increase the stress urinary incontinence. The alcohol as well, it will increase the uh, amount of the urine and it, it can cause some sort of your stress urinary incontinence as well or urinary incontinence. The BMI, it's crucial to ask about it because high BMI, again, it's another risk for this uh, urinary incontinence. Uh, the blood group or transfusion uh, concerns or any reservation for blood transfusion, don't ask about it except if the patient will go for a surgery. So there is risk of bleeding with any surgery. So we need to ask if there is any reservation for blood transfusion. Drug allergy, it's the patient safety question of all modules. So we need to keep this question in all cases, please. Cervical screening, very important if the patient is less than 65, more than 25 years. And we are here in the Uruguayani, so it's important to ask about it. So is it up to date and is it normal or not? We need to know if this patient still have uh, still still has her periods or she's starting her changes or the menopause and if yes what about the hrt very important question obstetric history what about the mode of the delivery uh, what about the recovery afterwards any prolonged labor uh, any use of any instruments you can even ask about the weight of the babies at that time this charge is not that much important if you feel it's important in special situation yes you can ask this question Medical history, so do you have any medical problem of concern? Are you on any regular medications? Do you have any chronic cough, any constipation? Because again, it's our risk factors for weak muscles. Um, any surgeries done in your tummy or down below before? Any family history of concern? What about support at home? Occupation, especially in the prolapse. So sometimes you will find like mixed cases. So you can ask about the occupation. Uh, mental health, it's important from my point of view. It's important here because uh, stress urinary incontinence, it will um, be like a, a problem or it's bothering the patient. So we need to know what about her mental health. Maybe she will need a counselor to help her until we will fix her problem or to solve or to sort out her problem. Examination and here. Uh, I'd like to offer you examination in presence of chaplain after your permission. Explain why do you want to examine her? Don't just say examination and go. If you want to check if, you, if we have prolapse, any obvious uh, problem, any lump or mass, so explain to the patient. Then explanation of the condition, stress, urinary incontinence, prolapse, we will start from the same point. You have to start from the muscles and ligaments, the pelvic floor muscles, explain to the patient, and it will be very good idea to draw in the exam because it will enhance your communication as well with the patient. It will make everything easy for you and for the patient to understand. So you can tell her that in our lower tummy, we have a lot of muscles and ligaments. They are supporting all the structures inside our lower tummy, like the water bag, like the bowel, like the womb, we have many risk factors that can cause weakness of these muscles, like the age, if the patient is menopause, like a normal vaginal delivery, the pregnancy itself is a risk factor, and the normal vaginal delivery afterwards using of instruments or a prolonged labor, the high BMI, the smoking, all of these are risk factors for weakness of these muscles. If we have weakness of these muscles, you can draw to the patient. So just imagine that this is your water bag and this is your water pipe. So there is angle here between the water bag and water pipe and the muscle supporting everything. When we have weakness of this muscle, there will be straightening of this angle. So the angle will be lost. So now this is the water bag and this is the water pipe. So any pressure from upwards, like coughing, sneezing, uh, lifting heavy objects. So with any pressure, this muscle is very weak and the angle is lost. So there will be leakage or leak of the urine. So this is how to explain in a very simple way. Start from the muscles and ligaments and then the angle. If this angle lost, so we will have this condition. And with this drawing, when you will start to speak about the surgery, if the patient accepts 
the surgery. So you will say the surgery, we will aim to keep this angle again or to keep it back, okay, or to, to make the, this angle again. So this is the how to sort the problem out, okay? After the explanation, please don't forget every now and then to check the understanding of the patient. You can ask her, am I clear so far? Are you still following me? Are we still in the same page? Uh, am I explaining myself well? So many questions you can ask the patient and it, it will be like you, you, are, um, you are keen to keep this patient on the track and you are keen to check the understanding of the patient. So it's part of the communication. After that, start the management plan. And here, no multidisciplinary team. It's not multidisciplinary team in terms of the multidisciplinary team used in the cancer or the complicated case. But usually, I, I write it like that to remind my candidates, please don't forget the group of expert team. So it's just a group of expert team. Involve as many subspecialities as you can. So consultant, nurse, exercise expert, dietitian, here, if you will give the medication, so you can involve pharmacist, therapist with you just to help you with the doses and how to use that medication. At the start, please don't forget to offer urine analysis or ask the patient if it's done by the GP because usually it's the first step in the GP. So they will offer her the urine analysis and the results will be on the system so you can just to check. If not done, so you can offer her urine analysis. Then enumerate the options we have. So you will ask the patient because, as I told you, urogyny is usually all the cases very long in the information gathering. As well, we have many options. So we need to check what about the patient preference to start with. So you will tell the patient we have lifestyle modification, pelvic floor muscle exercise, surgery, bulking agents, and medications. Am I clear so far? Yes, doctor. So do you have any preference to start with? So here the patient will say, doctor, I don't want any surgery. I just want the medication. So just say, I do appreciate your concern, but we have to start with the lifestyle modification. Yes, by the end, we can prescribe the medication for you, but let's start step by step. So for the lifestyle modification, check what is the risk in your patient. So if we, ha we have a patient with high BMI, and this is usually the situation in the exam, so weight reduction will be there. If the patient is a smoker, smoking cessation program, diet adjustment to avoid constipation. So all of this, the lifestyle is very important. Pelvic floor muscle exercise to do eight squeezings three times daily for 12 weeks and take care here in the stress urinary incontinence, it's 12 weeks. In the prolapse, it's 16 weeks. So don't mix it up. What about the pros and cons of the pelvic floor muscle exercise? It's very effective up to two out of three will be like, we'll have successful treatment. The problem or the cones will be that it has to be under supervision. So usually the patient will be bored to go every now and then for the pelvic floor muscle exercise. So this is the only disadvantage here. Coming to the surgery and the patient will refuse, our patient refusing the surgery. So we will not speak about it just here. I uh, keep it in the slides for the revision. So two types of the surgeries, the aim to keep the angle. Don't forget to tell the patient about the complications or the risk of this surgery. It's very important in the exam. If you will give anything like medication, tell the side effects. You will speak about the surgery. Please don't forget the complications. The good thing in any surgery, you can use the famous line, our famous line. It's like infection, bruises, bleeding, injury of any structure inside your lower tummy. Here we have extra points like sometimes this stress urinary incontinence, the surgery can cause new symptom, like urgency incontinence, like um, the, the symptoms like overactive bladder. So urgency, uh, the symptoms may come back, recurrence, and the surgery has its own risk. And uh, the, the most common problem will be problem with passing urine, but usually it's just temporary. It's not like a permanent problem or permanent uh, complication. Uh, option number four, bulking agents. And here with the medication, I want from you to touch the bulking agents because it's not well known. And nowadays it's, uh, we can use it like um, widely in UK. 
because it's very simple. It's daycare. It's not a surgery. It's minimally invasive procedure. We are using the Bulkamed to inject it around the water pipe. The problem or the disadvantage here will be the re-injection every six months. It's suitable during the pregnancy if the patient is not fit for the surgery or refuse the surgery. So that's why we need to speak about it. So it's effective, simple, daycare. The appointment will take around 30 minutes to offer this um, minimally invasive uh, procedure. And we will inject the, this uh, bulk of it around the urethra in three areas. And just the only problem, re-injection again. And as you can see, it's suitable in many conditions. Coming to the medications, which is the main thing to speak about in our station because here the patient refusing the surgery. So in any medication, guys, please keep in your mind, we have to mention the name of the medication, the dose of the medication, how it will uh, work, and also what about the side effects. Sometimes the dose, if you cannot rem remember, no problem. It's okay. But please give the, the correct name and how it will work and also the side effects. So the name here is Dulexetine. Uh, how it will work, it's it's working on the CNS, the central nervous system. It will interfere with special or certain chemicals, and it will increase the tone of the muscles around your water body. This is simple. The common side effects here, feeling sick or being sick, indigestion, constipation, dry mouth, sleep disturbance, as well as disturbed mood. Why? Because it's working on the central nervous system. Here, I added one slide on how to use it. It's very important. Why? Because this, these side effects usually will start when the patient starts the medication. So we, we have to use it like gradually to reduce this side effects. So how to use, we will start with 20 milligram for three days at night and then increase 20 milligram three days morning. So it will be 20, 20 morning, night and then increase the dose of the night. So it will be 40 at the night, 20 in the morning for another three days. And then by the end, increase the morning dose to have 40 milligram in the morning, 40 milligram at night, and this is the full dose. So is it important to remember this? No, it's extra line here for your knowledge. Or if you can remember in the exam, it will be very good in front of the examiner to, to explain it well to the patient because it's a safety point. But it's it's not a safety point in the exam because it's um, like extra point here. But I mean, it's safety point while you are dealing with the patient in your clinic to tell her how to use it. Uh, another safety point, ask the patient not to stop it suddenly because it will develop some troublesome symptoms like headache, nausea, parathesia or numbness, tremor, sleep disturbance, dizziness and anxiety. So it's very important to stop at its start as uh, as we start this medication. So as we start, start we started with 20 for three days and then 20 morning, 20 night for another three days and then 20 morning, 40 night for another three days. And then by the end, 40 morning, 40, na 40 at night. And this is the full dose. So we will go backward. So we will reduce the morning dose first and then reduce the night dose, 20, 20, then remove the morning dose to be 20 at night for three days, and then stop it. We have also to tell the patient that it will take time to work, so it will take around three to four weeks to work, so the patient will be reassured that it will not work from the first day, second day, or first work, first week, sorry. Uh, we have to review the patient after four weeks, and for sure if the patient has any problem or severe symptoms, she has to contact us. We will provide her with a contact number 24-7 or to come immediately to the emergency department. Don't forget by the end to give the patient patient information leaflet, another appointment with the consultant, and attach her to support the group. Don't forget to write back to the GP here because she was referred by the GP. Okay, so this is all for today and this is all for this case. Um, I wish this is a helpful video for you guys and thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.